Welcome. Good morning. Glad to be back from vacation and able to uh, share God's gifts with you this morning. Uh, we gather not only able to receive the gift of God's word and forgiveness this morning, uh, but we also are going to welcome two new members today. Um, the class of new members uh, includes Mike Semenek, who works on Sundays. Mike's uh, not going to be here to join um, with public pronouncement today, but we will have a, a short other time um, that Mike will make the pronouncement for anybody who wants to come. We'll let you know when that's going to be, and you can come and hear Mike pronounce. Uh, he's also joining the church, so we're glad to, to bring Tammy and Michelle and Mike all into the church and uh, celebrate today. So um, after the service, we'll have a brief reception. And then we encourage you to stay uh, through the reception for a voters meeting, which, uh, Greg, can we also say the voters meeting will be brief? He's nodding his head. He's not listening to me, but he's nodding his head, so that counts. All right. We rise for our first hymn, number 832, Jesus Shall Reign. stretch from shore to shore till moon shall wax and wane no more to him shall endless prayer be made and endless praises crown his head his name like sweet perfume shall rise with every morning sacrifice. People and realms of every tongue dwell on his love with sweetest song. And infant voices shall proclaim their earthly blessings on his name. Blessings abound where he reigns, the prisoners leap on who loose their chains. The weary find eternal rest, and all who suffer want are blessed. Let every creature rise and bring on her's peculiar to our King. Angels descend with songs again, and earth repeat the loud Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you. For his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness will go before him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, O God, Lamb of God, you who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, Graft into our hearts the love of your name and nourish us with all goodness that we may love and serve our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings chapter 19. Behold, the word of the Lord came to Elijah and he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, 
Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind was an earthquake, and the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his faith face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel to be king over Syria, and Yehu, the son of Nipsky, you shall anoint to be king over Israel, and Elijah, Elisha, the son of Saphat of Abel Mahola, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Hazel shall Yehu put to death, and the one who escapes the sword of Yehu shall Eli Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there. He found Elisha, the son of Saphat, who was piling with 12 yoke of oxen in front of him. He was with the 12. And Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I shall follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Their voice has gone out to all the earth. The epistle is from Galatians chapter 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the, for the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the likes uh, and things like these. I warned you as I warned you before, but those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus has, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. 
And he sent messengers ahead of him, who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. And they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. The congregation may be seated. We ask the children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning. Good to see you guys today. How are you doing? Uh, and I don't think we have anybody coming from the back. We'll see. We'll give them a second. Today we talked in both of our readings, well, two of our readings, about a yoke. Do you know what a yoke is? What's a yoke? What's that? Of a vehicle? No, of, of an egg. Oh, the middle part of an egg. Yes. <laughs> that is a yoke. It's not in the readings. But that is a good yoke, which is yummy. And you can do a lot of good things when you bake with it. Now, there's another kind of yoke that you cannot bake with. But you can't eat it all. And then it says there were 12 yoke of oxen. So those are not oxen eggs, right? No. So what's the yolk? Do you know what that is? So if you've got one big ox, and you've got another big ox, and you tie both oxen to your plow, will the oxen just naturally go straight together? So what happens to your plow if you've got one ox who goes that way, and the other ox goes that way? No, the, the, the plow doesn't know which way to go, and it may snap the ropes or break the, the, the plow, right? So what you do is you put a yoke on and between the two ox. So you put a big, heavy wooden bar on your shoulders and wood on your shoulders so that you can't go that way unless the other person's going with you. Have you ever done a three-legged race? So in a three-legged race, you tie two of your legs together. So if one of you goes that way and the other goes that way, what happens? Splat, you fall. But if you learn to walk together, you can win the three-legged race, right? You learn to use left foot, middle feet, and you get it figured out. So the, ox, the oxen figure it out when they have the yoke on them. We have to walk together. And so instead of just having one ox pull your plow, you get two times the power. Or in Elisha's case, he had 12 oxen yoked together. So this is kind of like I saw a video about some guys who wanted to see if you could jet ski behind little remote controlled boats. How many remote control boats do you think they had to yoke together to carry one 180 pound guy on skis behind those boats? They had a bunch, yeah. And they had to get all those boats to go together because if one boat went that way, it wasn't gonna work, right? So the yoke is heavy, but it helps the ox pull together. So even though they have to carry more, 
by carrying the heavy yoke, you end up getting more energy out of them because they pull together. Now, all that to get to the epistle reading, where it says that Jesus has set us free. We should not submit again to a yoke of slavery. So when he says don't submit to a yoke of slavery, does he mean don't let anybody crack an egg over your head? No. What kind of yoke is he talking about? The big heavy board. That there are some sins that we do in life that when I do them once, I kind of get yoked to them and I say, I want to do that again. And at first it seems fun. Ha ha ha, I got away with that. But then you find you're yoked to it and if you're yoked to something that's bad, what happens? Can you start going the other way? You get dragged along with the thing that you're yoked to. And that's what Paul's talking about here. He says that some things that we do, and he gives a whole list of things. We'll talk about the list in the sermon. We start to get yoked to those things. What God wants us to do is not to love because we're yoked to having to do good. And we're like, eh, I don't want to do good, but I have to. He wants us to be free in our hearts so that we want to do good. He wants to be able to have all of us as Christians going the same way in loving our neighbors, but without being forced to do it by the law, without being yoked to it, without being made to do it, but just being glad to love each other. So, for freedom, Christ has set you free. Therefore, do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Make sense? The last part we need to get then is, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Well, that's what Jesus did when he died on the cross for us. He set us free from that yoke of slavery. So those things that you feel like you're being pulled off to and you can't stop, pray to Jesus. Say, help me, and he'll release you. It's pretty nice. Will you pray with me? Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we've all made mistakes, and some of those mistakes, they won't let go of us, and they keep pulling us to do bad things. We pray right now that you would release us from that. For the power of your cross, having paid for our sins and setting us free, that we would be released from those yokes of slavery. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming up. We've got children's bulletins right there if you want to grab one, and we will sing our sermon hymn.
Grace, peace, and mercy to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text, Stand Firm. So our epistle reading begins with something that is amazing, that is astonishing, that is glorious. Paul says our problems are solved. Life is opened up. Christ has set us free. And I want to preach nothing else but this. Christ has set us free. Because we each know this in our own way. Some ways that we can look at and say, yeah, I did something similar. Other ways we say, I had no idea you were dealing with that. But each of us, we've had lives that are bent and broken. Where there's too much shame and there's too much wrath and there are too many missed opportunities and too many vendettas that we can't let go of. We have had lives where love was like a plant left unwatered for weeks, starved and shriveled. But now Christ has set us free. Christ has set us free. Water comes to that dying plant, and the plant stands up again, and flowers with that water and life that comes in Christ. The vendettas invert into forgiveness. Christ has set us free. The missed opportunities melt into eternal life. Today is a new day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ has set us free. The wrath releases. The shame slips away. The bent and broken becomes beautiful. Christ has set us free. And I want to stay in those words. Paul wanted to stay in those words. Christ has set us free. Those words should be enough. Amen. End of sermon. Move on to the next thing. Our faith can rest there. Because come what may, Christ is for us. So who shall be against us? But there are those who are against us. We take up arms against our own selves. Truly, maddeningly, sadly, Paul does not warn us about the government, though he knew a government would imprison people without ever setting a date for trial. He doesn't warn us about the culture, though he knew a culture that regularly took born children who were unwanted and exposed them and let the animals have them. A culture that applauded Christians being thrown to the lions. And Paul does not warn us of the foreign invaders, though Jerusalem lay besieged by tax collectors and sinners and soon an army. Why warn against any of those feeble forces? The government, the culture. Christ is for us. Who can be against us? No, truly and manningly and sadly, Paul warns us against ourselves. If you bite and devour one another, watch out. that You are not consumed by one another. This is the only enemy Paul is concerned about in our reading. Ourselves. We're supposed to be a flock of sheep. And Paul's description sounds like a flock of wolves. Biting and devouring. Why are we doing this then? Why come together as a church if the wolves seek out the flock? And put on really bad sheep costumes. So they can get away with another bite. We come together as a church knowing that there will be bites within the church because the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Our faith requires us practicing it with other people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. We gather to love. To say, the bite that comes is nothing compared to the love that keeps coming. And in those moments where a bite has come, where even I was one of the ones biting my neighbor, when we have failed to love, we keep gathering to hear that we are forgiven, that Christ has set us free. To reaffirm, Christ is Lord here, not our sins. To get back up off the floor and try again and again. Just think about it. 2,774 attempts 
That's the number of times it took Edison to find the right filament for the light bulb. I think I might have stopped before 2,774. Abraham Lincoln lost his first election for the legislature. He lost his first attempt to be nominated to Congress. He lost in his application to be commissioner of the land office. I mean, he brought his sights down low at that point in time. Couldn't be commissioner of land office. He lost in two straight elections to the Senate. You know what happened next, right? Henry Ford went broke five times. So why should a congregation become dispirited when the very things that Jesus warned would happen and that he would overcome happen, and he is in the midst of overcoming. He's provided a way. He has set us free. So what God does not expect of us is that we'll stop needing to forgive and be forgiven this side of the grave. He knows. He knows what the score is. That's why he paid for every last sin on the cross. What he does expect of us is to stand firm, to stick it out, to keep trying to be a community that will be known by our love, by his love. Whatever we're doing as a church, first, second, and last, and every step in between, we should be looking for opportunities to love one another. We're doing a yard sale. Yeah, we're selling stuff, raising money. But at each step along the way, there's a chance to love our neighbors, to love the people who are there volunteering, to be known by our love, not by whether uh, the quality of our used books are higher than the church next door. We're doing anything in the church. Don't bite and devour, but love one another. Share joy, show respect, lift up. Tell the people who are helping, well done, thank you. Abound in the fruit of the spirit, brothers and sisters. Because the desires of the flesh are against the spirit. And the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other. They are opposed to each other. So the fruit of the Spirit can abound when we are together. The desires of the flesh, however, they work to isolate, to pull us out of the flock, to keep us from one another. What are they? Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, the first three. These all take an act that is meant to build family, to seal a marriage in one flesh. And instead, what was made good becomes misused for selfishness and for passing pleasure. How does it work then? It isolates rather than building a bond that will go on and be a strength for children who come from that bond. In a minute, what was good works the other way. Marriages become broken by sexual immorality. Families are broken. People who practice these things before getting married lose a stronger foundation. Statistics have shown this. Pure love builds up, but sexual, sexual immorality and impurity and sensuality, they rip apart. The desires of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit are opposed to each other. It's the same for the next desires of the flesh that Paul mentions, idolatry and sorcery. They pull us from the true God to worship something that is a lie. The worship of the true God builds community, builds it into eternal life. But the lie divides and rips us apart. So the sorcery works as a way of giving you power over against your neighbor. It's the same for the next desires of the flesh. Enmity and strife. They keep us ready, looking for a fight. A dog on a tight leash, pulling to go find that other dog on the other side of the street and tell him who's boss. And we indulge in looking at our neighbors as the problem, not as somebody who deserves the respect of being made in the image of God. And when we start looking at our neighbors, certainly our problem, guess what? It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. 
because they realize that we're not looking at them with respect, but as a potential problem. So they start to get a little nervous or a little defensive. And what do you know? We've got a problem. See, I was right all along. We need patience and gentleness to put away past problems and to have real people. We need to restore relationships, not burn them to justify our enmity. But enmity burns and demands more fuel for its fire. And so we end up feeding it lies. We slander our neighbor to justify the things we want to do to our neighbor. Jealousy, fits of anger, it's more self-indulgence. Each respond to something that is a manageably bad thing, but then we overdramatically decide not to manage it, but to go, oh, it's so horrible. Let it go instead. Don't let me claim my rights so loudly that I end up losing the thing I have a right to. See, the works of the flesh, they rip and they tear and they want to burn it all down. Rivalries, dissensions, divisions. As this list goes on, we see that we're circling back around. But as we circle this drain, we are losing the ability to break out of the works of the flesh. That yoke of slavery is getting harder and heavier. The enmity has hardened into division. The strife into dissension. The jealousy into rivalry. We were set free. But the works of the flesh take us farther and farther from freedom. And when we get to these last, envy and drunkenness and orgies, if we get to these, we're losing ourselves completely. Envy, drunkenness, orgies, they lose your identity in the scrum. And love is ripped apart from the desires of the flesh. And what are you left with but slavery? Now, I get it. I mean, we all get it. In the moment when the desire of the flesh is on you, you say, uh, it's just a little rip. We'll come back and we'll mend it later. But right now, I feel hurt. I feel lonely. I feel cheated. And my flesh says, this will make me feel better. When people talk about emotional eating, using food not for the needs of the body, but for the needs of the heart, like, I can't fix this problem, but there's a pint of ice cream in there with my name on it. So I'll just go eat the ice cream and I'll feel better. Emotional eating just adds calories that we don't need. The desires of the flesh are doing the same kind of thing, but they're clogging a different kind of artery. The arteries of the spirit. The desires of the flesh, fits of anger, sexual immorality, they have much worse effects on the soul than emotional eating has on the body. And in fact, they oftentimes have bad effects on the body too. But so much of what we end up facing as physical maladies comes from unaddressed spiritual disease. If nothing else, God has set us free from final judgment because he said, look, sin gets to go this far and then it's done. Death. No more. But Christ has set us free by saying, okay, I'll hit that penalty line, death, without having done anything to have earned it. So that I can transform that penalty line into the opening of a gate to freedom. He took our sin. He paid our price. And too often we think of salvation as exhausted on the cross. And the price was paid completely on the cross. The cross is the ultimate victory. But from the cross comes much more than just a ticket through death to eternal life. I mean, that's good enough on its own. Don't get me wrong. We have plenty of other sermons. We'll just celebrate that. But the people that we mourn, we will see them again. And we will have eternal life. That is good. But today Paul is telling us, what Christ has earned for us on the cross gives us something now that we need now, too. He purified our flesh in the ultimate legal courts of heaven. He won the right to pour out the Holy Spirit upon this flesh as it is right now, even before the resurrection. The Holy Spirit is given to us. Christ has set us free. 
So that that whole list, we can skip past it to get to the fruit of the Spirit. We can live in the freedom of the resurrection. It's that same Spirit which is going to give us the ultimate good gift that's going to revivify our bodies on the last day. But it's already revivifying the soul now. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. So in those moments when you feel hurt, abandoned, forgotten, don't think, well, how can I make the flesh feel a little better? Don't go down that path. We don't want, in the end, to be the one who is self-satisfied. That's not what we were made to be. We were made in the image of a triune God who from eternity and to eternity, the three in one share love forever. What we want is not to self-satisfy, but to satisfy others and to end up in a relationship where they are joyful because they have satisfied us. So in those moments when you feel like nobody else, none of the other human beings are going to do that for me, don't forget what Christ has done to do it for you. When you are hurting, reach out to Christ who has set you free. Seek the Spirit's gifts. Cling to them, confident that you are loved by God. You are cared for by God. You are not alone. The Spirit has been poured into your heart. You are not abandoned. You are alive in the Spirit, and in the Spirit you have full freedom. That's how the flesh is crucified. We'd never do it alone, but we're not alone. He brings us along. He is our life. He is our Lord. And He is our love. All praise to Him, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise to confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated, but we ask Tammy and Michelle to come forward now so we receive them as new members of Holy Cross. here. Thank you. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to us, apostles, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will deny before my Father who is in heaven. So we ask Tammy and Michelle to lift up your hearts, the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Yes, I renounce Do you believe in God the Father Almighty and Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? Yes. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, God, the grace of God. Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? Yes, Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? 
Upon this, your confession, I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper. Participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ask the congregation to now please rise as we pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess Jesus' saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith and the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Turn to your seats. We will continue with our prayers. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of our salvation, when your son set his face to go to Jerusalem and the cross, his zeal would not be deterred. Grant us to pray with the same fervor and boldness, trusting that you hear us for the sake of the Son of Man. Lord, in your mercy. God of the church, you give pastors and church workers to proclaim your steadfast love, to announce freedom from the yoke of slavery to sin, and to point all toward the cross of Christ. Bless their faithful work, that their labor in the Lord may never be in vain. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you established the family to be a place of protection and growth. Grant that our homes would never become a stumbling block to the kingdom of God, but they would serve to foster within us the fruits of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. God of all power and might, to you belong the kingdom and the glory forever. Give insight and wisdom to our president, governor, legislature, and magistrates. Direct them to punish evildoers, reward the righteous, and strive for peace. Grant that Christians may live quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, in your mercy. God of refuge, your salvation draws near to all who trust in you. Grant peace to your people and show us your salvation. Here are petitions for healing, strength, and comfort for all for whom fast are our prayers. We pray especially today for Dave and Gabriel. Be near them as the refuge of the weary and the God who preserves his people. Lord, in your mercy. God of the Lord Jesus Christ, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant that the whole church may fix her eyes on you. Teach us the ways of the cross. Remove hindrance and distractions. Do not let the freedom we have in the gospel become an excuse for sin or vice, but an opportunity for love and service. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Grant, we beseech you, almighty God, into your church, your Holy Spirit, and the wisdom which comes down from above. As your word as becomes it may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people. That in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Shuts us in, shall prove 
gate to heaven, Jesus, here with you I die, there to live with you on high. Let us also live with Jesus, he has risen from the dead, that to life we may awaken, Jesus, you are now our head. We are your own living members, where you live there we shall be, in your presence constantly. Jesus, let me faithful be, life eternal grant to me. The congregation may be seated. We'll keep our announcements brief uh, as we're about to go have a reception. Um, and then our meeting, uh, voters meeting after that. Who has announcements for us? Kathy? So that buys us half of a wall. Buy some shingles. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're, the shed fund continues to uh, to get to the point where it will be able to hold a roof over its head. Uh, so thank you for that work. Other announcements people want to bring to our attention, Marilyn. Thank you, Marilyn. Look forward to uh, trying morning VBS and uh, getting the kids when they are just beginning to get revved up instead of revving them up before bedtime. <laughs> so so uh, we'll look forward to, to trying that this year. Charlie, did you have an announcement? I think somebody uh, pointed to you. Uh, there was three, three vanilla folders in the treasurer's mailbox that are no longer there. If anybody knows anything about where they went, would you please let me know? Yeah. Yeah, there was some important stuff there. So accidents happen, yeah. but we want to remind you that you should not be rooting through the treasurer's box on purpose. <laughs> uh, and if you accidentally took it, we, we, won't, we won't assume you did it on purpose. We'll assume it was an accident. They had just fallen out and you didn't know where they came That's absolutely, yeah, yeah. So we that, need. That has happened before. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So, Yeah. All right. Hopefully, 
envelope, uh, envelope found. And maybe a um, good reminder for other people who have boxes back there to go through your box in case they did fall out and somebody put them back in the wrong box. It's always good to just kind of run through your box and make sure there's nothing in there that's not supposed to be in your box. Suzanne. So if you want to know what they're talking about, I'm not going to tell you. You have to stay for the voters meeting. It's exciting. It's really exciting. You want to know about it. Uh, other announcements people want to bring to our attention. Uh, we'll be back to uh, Wednesday Zoom and uh, hybrid uh, in person at Andy and Nancy's house. Uh, the address is in there. And uh, we're back to Malachi uh, Bible class uh, this Wednesday. And then. Um, You'll want to keep an eye on schedules because I did just get back from vacation, but I will be gone on one of the upcoming Sundays for National Youth Gathering uh, with Mike Semenek and uh, Mike's son Max and my son Isaac. So that is coming up in uh, the first half of July. Um, so we are going to go ahead and add one more Sunday to the Peace Crafting Bible Study. Uh, we didn't finish what we were going through today, and we had kind of not finished in previous Sunday. So there'll be one more peace crafting Bible study the first Sunday in July, and then we'll start something new after I get back from National Youth Gathering. Any other announcements? All right, God's blessings on your week.